Hello everyone, I'm Mar Theron, and this is a special edition of Conspiracy Comedy News. It's normally broadcast on uh, American Freedom Radio. Louis C.K. has been in the news of late. He allegedly whips out his schmeckle and spanks it at the most inopportune moments. What a cad. You know, and often at times when his female companions have expressed no interest in watching him have a go at it, if you will. He basically traps unsuspecting women in his hotel room, pulls out his shvugi, and starts spanking it and making them stick around until he's done. Back in 19, uh, no, actually it was 2002, at the Aspen Comedy Festival, he invited the Chicago female comedy duo Dana Min Goodman and Julia Wolov back to his hotel room. The two ladies, they gladly joined him and offered him some weed. Hey, and he turned it down, but he asked if it would be okay with them if he took his dick out. And thinking that he was joking, the woman gave him a facetious thumbs up. But he wasn't joking. He stripped naked and actually started jerking off in front of them. So okay, the ladies made for the exit, but Louis stood in front of the door and blocking their way. They say they were paralyzed. And uh, they wouldn't. he wouldn't let them out until he was finished. He ejaculated, and then they ran for or it, I guess, in his weakened state, if you will. One of, the, one of the ladies said she was so shaken by the episode that she complained to the festival's organizers about Louis C.K.'s behavior. You know, that's kind of an odd thing to drop in their lap, I mean, so to speak. This is, this, they're not the penis patrol. They're just festival organizers. So instead of calling the police, they called his extremely powerful manager, Dave Becky. And he told her that if she valued her career, she would drop the subject. And she decided that she valued her career. So she dropped it. But now, like 15 years later, they've come forward and they talked to the New York Times, along with other comedians, uh, Rebecca Corey, Abby Schachner. Uh, Rebecca Corey told the Times that she was working with CK on a TV pilot back in 2005, when he allegedly asked her to point blank that if he could go to her dressing room in order for her to watch him masturbate. And she refused his uh, generous offer. So, Shackner, Abby Shackner, she said she was talking to him on the phone in 2003 when she realized that he was masturbating while he was talking to her on the phone. And she was aghast, I guess. And the fifth woman that was working on the Chris Rock show, and she didn't give her name. She said she wouldn't give her name, but uh, she said that Lucy K. abused his power, quote, and by repeatedly asking her to watch him spank his monkey. Another comedian uh, named Jer Jen Kirkman, she talked about a, quote, known perv comedian in her podcast recently who had mistreated her when they were on tour together. It was obvious to people in the comedy circle who she was referring to, even though she didn't mention Louie by name. She said in her podcast, quote, Another guy who is a very famous comic. He is probably at Cosby level at this point. He is lauded as a genius. He is basically a French filmmaker at this point. You know, new material every year. He's a known perv. There's a lockdown on talking about him. His guy friends are standing by him, and you cannot say a bad thing about him. And I've been told by people, well then, say it then. Say it if it's true. If I say it, my career is over. My manager and my agent have told me that. And this guy didn't rape me, but he made a certain difficult decision to go on tour with him really hard. Because I knew if I did, I'd be getting more of the same treatment that I'd been getting from him. And then it, that was what she said in her podcast. In an interview with The Village Voice in September, Kirkman said, There are rumors out there that Louis takes his dick out at women. He's never done that to me. 
I never said he did. I never implied that he did. What I said was, when you hear rumors about someone and they ask you to go on the road with them, this is what being a woman in comedy is like. Imagine if there's always a chance of rain over your head, but with men, there isn't. So you go, should I leave the house with an umbrella or not? That's what she said about it. She's a funny gal. Roseanne Barr has uh, spoken publicly about women comedians she knows that have had to deal with Louis and his C-O-C-K, if you will. Then you got uh, the Amazon series Tig Notaro's One Mississippi, which lists Louis C.K. as the executive producer. Now, Tig says he has, quote, nothing to do with my show. He's never been involved. I don't waste my time on him or what anyone thinks. His name on it, his name's on it, but we are writing the show, the writer's room. We're sitting in editing. We're acting. We're on set. We're doing press. And everyone that's directly involved in the show works very hard. They are decent, talented human beings, and I feel lucky to be surrounded by them. But yeah, he has nothing to do with the show. She said, like, for the third time. Nothing. Nothing, Tig, really? Nothing at all? In one of the episodes of that season's show, we see a character forced to sit and watch as a man in power jacks off in front of her in the workplace. She admitted that she and C.K. had, quote, an incident before one Mississippi even started, but she declined to offer any specifics. She said, we don't talk since then, so far as what he's doing or what he's done. Well, one thing he did do to her was steal her idea for a person ordering a clown service for himself, and uh, C.K. performed it on Saturday Night Live. Pretty funny sketch, but it was Tiggs. She had done it before. You know, Louis, he's been rather brazen about this whole subject, and, and he added it to his, shall we say, performance art. He talks about masturbating in his show a lot. He, I saw him do a sketch where there was like a, a fake interview where some a Christian lady was talking about how you shouldn't masturbate, and... Uh, <laughs> and Louis was like the voice of reason saying, but I have to masturbate. Men masturbate. Everybody masturbates. Anyway. So he, he appears to be actually taunting his victims, you know, in the public with these things. Like first came the controversial Louis episode of Pamela Part 1. And his character, which is like an avatar of himself, attacks Pamela Adlin's character in an apartment attempting to overpower her before she finally fights free. You know, Louis later argued that the scene represented a consensual encounter, calling it a fun train wreck of a ride, quote-unquote. He's got this upcoming film called I Love You, Daddy. It's about a 60-something-year-old director played by John Malkovich that is in a romantic affair with a 17-year-old girl. And uh, apparently he's you know, had uh, relationships with young women quite a few times, as that's what the character's all about, old man, young women. But there's a scene in it in which a character pretends to masturbate at length in front of other people. Other characters in the film discuss the rumors of sexual impropriety. So it's kind of like a slice of his life, if you will, um, maybe an autobiographical thing that's going on there, I don't know. So the New York premiere of the controversial film was canceled. The film was due to be released next Friday, uh, if you're watching this while I'm recording it, on November 17th, that'll be next Friday. The distributor said in a statement this Friday though, The Orchard will not be moving forward with the release of I Love You Daddy. So yeah. They went to that trouble, put a film in the can, and now it's shut down. You know, it's already affecting his career in other ways. He had a scheduled appearance on Colbert's show Thursday night. That was canceled. Uh, his spot on HBO's Night of Too Many Stars, which is scheduled for Saturday, November 18th. It's a live show. It's now going to be filled with, the, I'm assuming, Triumph the Insult Comedy Dog. I don't know. Um, oh, I'm being told that's not true. <laughs> Let's just say it's a, the unknown comic. 
HBO announced that it would purge Louis C.K.'s past projects from his on-demand service. And Netflix announced Friday it will not move forward with the second stand-up special with the comedian citing his unprofessional and inappropriate behavior with female colleagues. So Louis C.K. put out a statement. It's not too long. Let me bear with me while I read it for you. I want to address the stories told to the New York Times by five women named Abby, Rebecca, Dana, Julia, who felt able to name themselves and one who did not. These stories are true. At the time, I said to myself that what I did was okay because I never showed a woman my dick without asking first, which is also true. But what I learned later in life, too late, is that when you have power over another person, asking them to look at your dick is a question. Isn't a question. It's a, a predicament for them. The power I had over these women is that they admired me, and I wielded that power irresponsibly. I've been remorseful of, of my actions and tried to learn from them and run from them. Now I'm aware that the extent of the impact of my actions, I learned yesterday the extent to which I left these women who admired me feeling badly about themselves and cautious around other men who would never have put them in that position. I also took advantage of the fact that I was widely admired in my and their community, which disabled them from sharing their story and brought hardship to them when they tried, because people who look up to me didn't want to hear it. I didn't think that I was doing any of that because my position allowed me to not think about it. There's nothing about this that I forgive myself for, and I have to reconcile it with who I am, which is nothing compared to the task I left with them. I wish I had reacted to their admiration of me by being a good example to them as a man and given them some guidance as a comedian, including because I admired their work. The hardest regret is to live with is what you've done to hurt someone else. And I can hardly wrap my head around the scope of hurt I brought on them. I'd be remiss to ex exclude the hurt that I brought on people who I work with and have worked with whose professional and personal lives have been impacted by all this, including projects currently in production, the cast and crew of Better Things, Baskets, The Cops, One Mississippi, and I love you, Daddy. I deeply regret that this has brought negative attention to my manager, Dave Becky, who only tried to mediate a situation that I caused. I brought anguish and hardship to the people at FX who have given me so much, the orchard who took a chance on my movie, and every other entity that has bet on me through the years. I brought pain to my family, my friends, my children, and their mother. I spent my long and lucky career talking and saying anything I want. I'll now step back and take a long time to listen. Thank you for reading. And thus endeth the reign of Louis the C.K. King Louis the C.K. I guess we're not going to be hearing from him for a while. And Harvey Weinstein is still in the news. Uh... In the wake of the sexual assault allegations against the film mogul Harvey Weinstein, uh, filmmakers Jeff James Toback and Brett Ratner and Kevin Spacey, yeah, there's a lot of uh, sexual scandals going on now. The question is, why did Brad Pitt, one of the biggest movie stars in the world, work with Harvey Weinstein not once but twice after the executive had allegedly attacked both his ex-fiancee, Gwyneth Paltrow, and then-wife Angelina Jolie. What up, Brad? And why did Quentin Tarantino, whose films are responsible for much of Weinstein's success, continue to work with him after learning that he attacked his ex-girlfriend, Mira Sorvino? Did you see... Uh <laughs> Who was the opener for Saturday Night Live last week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy from Seinfeld. He did a. He was all in, all over that stuff, and uh, so you know, the poor guy. People are chastising him, but I won't. I won't give him any more trouble than I have to. Larry, Larry, uh, 
Larry Silverstein. No, Larry Flint. No. <laughs> David. Larry David. Thank you. Voice in my head. <laughs> The Manhattan District Attorney's Office is going to seek an indictment against old Harvey Weinstein. Larry David let me know that you pronounce his name Weinstein. I've been pronouncing it Weinstein because I'm crazy that way. <laughs> but they're going to indict him on charges of rape as soon as next week. What? Oh, yeah. They've been building a case against Harvey over claims he raped actress Paz de la Huerta twice in 2010 in her Manhattan apartment. He's reportedly over in Arizona, which where old Harvey is, where he had been seeking treatment at a rehabilitation facility. Is it a, a rape rehab? I, I didn't even know they had such things. <laughs> the, the things I learned but from me. The NYPD chief of detectives, old Bobby Boyce, he says that she put forth a credible and detailed narrative to us. They found corroboration and are seeking an arrest warrant. They're going after him. Since these initial allegations against old Weinstein emerged, nearly 90 women have accused him of sexual crimes ranging from harassment to rape. I got like 90 women that say, who? Who is it? Who? who? Who's that guy? He was fired from his role at the Weinstein Company, a company he co-founded in 2005. And I was like, why? How, how, how do you get fired without a conviction? I don't know. His brother, uh, Bob Weinstein, he was... He was, at, you know, fired him. Uh, found him. That's what I heard, anyway. What do I know? And he was expelled from numerous Hollywood trade organizations, uh, including the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, the Television Academy, and the Producers Guild of America. He's out of the club. Oh, but it gets even better. This other actress, Asia Argento, when she was asked why she waited so long to report Harvey Weinstein raping her, she said he used ex-Israeli ex Mossad agents to spy on her. She said it was terrifying. I think they were doing more than spying on her. They were presenting themselves, if you will. So, you see, the firms that Weinstein hired include Kroll, which is one of the world's largest corporate intelligence companies, and the Black Cube Da, da, da. The Black Cube. It's an enterprise run largely by former officers of Mossad or, and other Israeli intelligence agencies. You know, like ISIS, I'm assuming. You know, the Israeli Secret Intelligence Service. Black Cube. Doesn't that sound like the name of a horror movie that Harvey would produce, direct, and perhaps star in? Black Cube coming to a hotel room all over you. <laughs> This agency, they made a name for themselves, you know, digging up information for companies in Israel, Europe, and the U.S. that led to successful legal judgments against business rivals. So they're handy to have around if you happen to be, uh, you know, Harvey Weinstein. They have branches in Tel Aviv, London, Paris, and they offer their clients the skills of operatives that are, quote, highly experienced and trained in Israel's elite military and governmental intelligence unit. Mm-hmm. Well, two of these private investigators from the Black Cube using false identities met with the actress Rose McGowan to extract information from her. One of the investigators pretended to be a woman's rights advocate and secretly recorded at least four meetings with her. This operative, using a different false identity, met twice with a journalist to find out which women were talking to the press. She implied that she also had an alter altercation, you know, <laughs> with our boy Weinstein, and she had an allegation against him. Last fall, Weinstein began mentioning the Black Cube in conversations with his associates and attorneys. Yeah, so he's admitting these, he's uh, using those guys and that services. He's also enlisted journalists to uncover information that he could use to undermine women with allegations. He also enlisted former employees from his firm, you know, from his uh, film enterprises, if you will, to join in the effort, collecting names and placing calls that, according to some sources who received them, felt intimidating. Blah, 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 blah. I know, it's scary. You get a call from Weinstein and say, I want you to spy on these babies. 
He would compile psychological profiles that sometimes focused on their personal or sexual histories. Harvey monitored the progress of the investigations personally. I just bet he did, while wearing a bathrobe in a hotel room, waiting for his next victim, like the spider in the web that he is. Oh, Harvey. Poor Harvey. He just misunderstood, right? Not to be outdone by Hollywood and its sex scandals, the European Parliament is having its own version of incidents of sexual harassment. Everybody wants to get in on this. The female staffers working in the European Chamber claim that they've been subject to widespread sex abuse by European lawmakers. Politico Europe, a weekly covering European affairs, claims that it has collected testimonies of 87 women and six men that show sex abuse is widespread in the European Parliament. It has set up a special website to encourage victims to come forward and give their testimonies. The, the testimonies allege that some of the MEPs have traded sex for legislative favors and work contracts, among others. There have also been victims from the NGOs of the private sector. So the British Sunday Times newspaper, they cited serious allegations about MEPs committing harassment against the female workers. It kept the names of the alleged perpetrator secret, Although it did mention Yves Cochet, a former French environment minister and Green Party MEP. I knew it. The Greenies, they can't keep it in their genies, is what I'm trying to tell you. Is what I'm trying to say. These guys, they ain't, they ain't right. And the report said the European Parliament has become a hotbed of sex harassment, citing widespread instances of MEPs groping their assistants from behind and sending them dick pics at night. Compared to Jer Jeffrey Epstein's, his sex slave island, also known as Orgy Island, <laughs> you know, that's where the big leaguer plays, right? And Paddock, I was talking about it, I think, in my last show, Steve Paddock, the, the evidence had come out that he was, he has interests in the Philippines where they have child sex slavery and, you know, child sex child sex things were going on and his gal Friday was uh, very heavily in that area. She was working for the biggest casino girly bar with a gigantic stable of, of you know, prostitution. This is things like a, a former military base. And our boy Steve Paddock, his company that he'd had for like a decade happened to have the same name as a, as a little area there a few miles away from this this mecca of sex trafficking, this prostitution and gambling and, you know, red light district. It's a, it's a big area. Sounds like a real part of town to me. I don't get to go and have any fun. But this guy was in on it. It's like he has a corporation and he has, he's, he's uh, involved in a company that brags about how it brings children from, that are former military, because it was the former American military base, that Americans had sex with, you know, women over there, and they have children over there, so they're trying to reacquaint, you know, to bring those children of American soldiers here to the United States. So it's got the air of legitimacy. But, you know, nobody's really keeping an eye on that, and they got the planes and all that, and they're, they, they can do it. That's apparently what goes on, is if you'll watch that movie I keep pushing on you, called American Made, you'll see that these guys, they gun run, they money run, they drug run and they bring you know throw some kids back there and bring you know sex prostitutes along. It's all part of their whole setup. It's all hand in hand. It's all the same international crime syndicate, which is of course CIA, FBI, what have you. So uh, Alex Acosta, the former uh, labor the labor secretary in the Trump administration, I think he's. It's current, right? Alex Acosta? And the former prosecutor in Florida's Southern District at the time of Epstein's trial, this Jeffrey Epstein, he agreed to drop the federal charges against Mr. Epstein after intense pressure from the attorneys representing him. The reason, Labor Secretary Acosta said, was that Epstein agreed to settle lawsuits and pay restitution to more than two dozen human trafficking survivors, serve a minimum amount of jail time, and register as a sex offender. 
He's paid out five million dollars to sex trafficking victims, and it's like I believe that only went to three of them. One of them got a million, another one got two million. That's got to be more than three. It's hard to get a, a clear handle on this. That's what we know about, though. He's thrown out five million that we know of, which is basically a drop in a bucket for this guy. He's a multi-billionaire. He's a Wall Street hedge fund manager that only works with investors that are willing to put up a minimum of a billion dollars to invest. And, you know, our boy Epstein there, he demands full control of their funds. they got to give him the money and just sit back and trust him. Meanwhile, he's got the, the, the plane, which has apparently got a huge bed in there that they put teenage girls with anybody who's got the money to fly on. And a lot of people have flown on this plane. Uh, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Trump, Trump, Donald Trump, all these guys have flown on this. This sex slave, underage sex slave thing goes all the way to the top and across all, there's some people estimated that at least a third of our government is involved in this. A third. You got 500 and some odd people over there in Washington, a third of them are in on the sex slave thing. It's kind of like skull and bones. You may not know what Skull and Bones is, but once you've been tapped for Skull and Bones, they get you drunk, they get you naked, and they get, you know, drugged up, what have you, and next thing you know, you're in a casket having gay sex with somebody and pictures being taken of you so that they can use that against you. That's how they work. It doesn't matter whether you do it willingly or not. You get caught up, and the next thing you know, they get the cameras everywhere. So as you may recall, Donald Trump and former President Bill Clinton, they have ties to this convicted pedophile and Democratic donor, by the way, Jeffrey Epstein, is a big donor, he and Soros, you know Soros is, is, is hip deep in uh, child sex slaves. It was undercover that Bill Clinton, known for his sexual escapades, he has strong ties to Epstein. <clears throat> he was aboard the infamous Lolita Express, that's what they call his plane. Lolita Express. It's owned by this billionaire pedophile that uh, Bill Clinton, he'd flown on it at least 26 times. The flight logs show trips between 2001 and 2003 included extended junkets around the world with Epstein and fellow passengers identified on manifest by their initials or their first names including Tatiana. Tatiana? Yes, it's on the list. This tricked-out jet earned its Nabokov-inspired nickname because it was reportedly outfitted with a bed where passengers had group sex with young girls. It says so right here, so it must be true. Official flight logs filed with the Federal Aviation Administration show Bill Clinton traveled on some of the trips with as many as 10 U.S. Secret Service agents. Oh yeah, you know, if you want to have a Secret Service agent that is dedicated to protecting you, you need to bring him on the, what do you call it? The uh, Lolita Express. Yeah, these Secret Service agents, if they get to be on that, oh, yeah, man, we, we, we've heard all about this before, about the Secret Service guys having all kind of hookers in their rooms. Sheesh. It's, it's out in the open. It's a, it's a well-kept, <laughs> non-secret, if you will. But, of course, there was this five-leg Asia trip between May 22nd and May 25th back in 2002 that not a single, not a single Secret Service agent is listed. This was on uh, Bill Clinton when Bill Clinton was president. Yeah, he didn't. Sometimes there's some things he want to do where he get freaky dicky. He don't want his Secret Service agents to know about because then they got something on him. He get dirt on the Secret Service guys, but the other way around, he can't have that. Oh, no, he can't have that. So, yeah, Trump is accused of threatening and raping a 13-year-old girl on the private island. Epstein is also named in the suit for sexual misconduct. The lawsuit accusations have been vehemently denied by the Trump camp. Well, of course they're not going to admit it, alleging that the filing is a hoax. And there's no evidence that the plaintiff, if you will, in question actually exists. Well, I bet she doesn't exist anymore. You got somebody, a 13-year-old girl, that says that Trump, at the present time, one of the most powerful people, if not the most, well, no, nah, he's not. You know, he's the most powerful puppets in the world, if you will. Yeah, they're going to X him. That may be why Trump, uh, that may be why Bill Clinton had a, <laughs> wanted to go on a, what do you call it, a, a flight on to the sex slave island without his secret service. 
because maybe just maybe they were involved in you know some of these child killing things where they you know they're, they're worshiping Satan and stuff and drinking the blood of children. I mean it's 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 sick. I tell you, the the stories are sick. It's it's almost unbelievable. But you know once you hear it a thousand times, once you start realizing you know you got the pedo gate and and uh, pizza gate and the the stories behind that of you know the blood what do you call it the the blood dinners you know, there. Trump, though, referred to this Epstein guy, this Ep Epstein character, as a terrific guy. He called him a terrific guy. A guy that was found guilty of sex trafficking girls as young as 12 years old to facilitate rape parties with his wealthy friends. That was in 2008. He was found guilty of it. They, they said, okay, look, the evidence is overwhelming. You're guilty. You know, this is this is a billionaire, terrific guy. He served 13 months in prison over this. Trump says he was a terrific guy, though. So who else is uh, trying to put their hat, throw their hat in the ring of uh, sex scandals? Kevin Spacey got pulled into it. He stepped into the child sex arena Monday after he was publicly accused of attempting to sexually assault a 14-year-old boy. And who was the 14-year-old boy? Well, it's a, an actor named Anthony Rapp. Y'all know him, right? And not only is this not the first time that first uh, Spacey faced such allegations, but it calls his past into question, which includes his foundation that specifically works with children is the main thing about this, right? It's like it's kind of like uh, well, Paddock got once he uh, allowed himself or was forced to become the patsy for the Vegas thing, and all of this, all kind of stuffs coming up about him. Did the cat get out of the bag? Is what I'm asking, or are they deliberately? Drawing attention to that. You know, there's there's certain people that are like in, into these Luciferian groups and, you know, the Satanist groups and everything like that. They say that they derive power when people know about what they're doing. That somehow there's a there's a magic, you know, black magic, the voodoo magic, if you will, in people not being able to do anything about it. That they get strength from that, if you will. That they that they somehow or another that makes the magic better when people are in despair knowing how evil they are and what they're doing. So maybe, just maybe, but they realize that there's multiple levels of the media. They control a lot of it, but that they don't mind that a lot of it gets out into the open is my theory. So it's a... Uh, the Kevin Spacey Foundation is an organization of mentors, advocates, and educators. And it specifically works with children. And they hope that uh, they work with hopeful emerging artists to discover, fund, and co produce transatlantic musical, dance, theater, and film projects, according to its website, which features a photo of Spacey surrounded by eager children hoping to break into the entertainment industry. Yeah, so this Anthony Rapp guy, he was 14 years old at the time, but this was 30 years ago, and he's now speaking out and accusing Spacey of attempting to sexually assault him during an after party. You know, as Spacey was making his name on Broadway, another actor was doing the same. You know, this, this uh, Anthony Rapp guy was doing the same thing on a play called Precious Sons, and Anthony quotes at a party for the two casts where they joined their after parties together, in 1986, he said, He picked me up like a groom picks up the bride over the threshold. But I don't, like, squirm away initially because I'm like, What's going on? And then he lays down on top of me. He was trying to seduce me. I don't know if I would have used that language, but I was aware that he was trying to get with me sexually. Sheesh. So, more recently, in January 2015, at the same time Spacey was promoting his foundation and searching for eager children, a report was published revealing that Spacey's name was alongside Bill Clinton on the log of visitors who flew on Lolita Express. So, this Anthony Rapp guy, he was a star in the Broadway musical Rent, and he toured with it, and the film version also. So, you know, he's a singer, and he's a... he's he, Right now, he's a... He's on one of my favorite new shows, is Star Trek Discovery. I'm a Trekkie. The Star Trek Discovery TV show, he plays Lieutenant Stamets. Is that 
weird guy that go, gets into the box and he's like got a, and he attaches himself to these strange uh, microscopic entities that propel the starship and it becomes <laughs> like instantaneous teleportation through throughout the universe. Pretty cool. So yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not sure that, you know, am I the only one that thinks it's a tad fishy that this timing is a bit odd with the Weinstein Weinstein scandal all over the place and a huge herd of actresses coming out of the woodwork to get in on the action? Is this the new way you get to be on TV and, and get publicity for your work? Now all of a sudden, after 30 years, why would he throw down this accusation? You know? Does he just want to get in on the bandwagon, is, is what I'm thinking, accusing a celebrity like Kevin Spacey of sexual improprieties? You know, I, I, I just, I ain't buying it. It's not like he was raped. I mean, the guy made a pass at him. Okay, I get it. It's not a good thing. I'm not saying that what he did was okay. I just think the timing's a bit obvious. 30 years later, he makes a big deal about it. Why didn't he make a big deal about it last year? Or the 29 years before that. Why now? Oh, because everybody's doing it and he wants to be part of it now that the timing is hot. Otherwise, if he'd have come out or if any of them had come out, you know what I mean? And uh, make it accusations against Weinstein or what have you, that it wouldn't it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But now that uh, he can be, add his name to a list of all these other people, maybe he thinks taking down Kevin opens the door for him to get roles that Spacey would or would usually get, you know, it's kind of like okay when a when a movie star or <laughs> comedian what have you dies or what have you, then that means we all move up. It's a joke, you know, but it's but it's, you know it's a saying. We all move up a notch in the lineup for the for the good gigs. So if he thinks he can take down Kevin Spacey, does that mean he gets those roles? that Spacey would usually get? Is that what he thinks? Is that how his ego works? That he thinks he's he's the same kind of an actor, the same character, the same type of a performer? I hate to break it to you, Antony, but you're not the same type. <laughs> Spacey can and has played straight, macho, leading man characters, and you, you come across a tad more like a Nelly victim of sexual abuse type of guy, willing to say anything to get your picture in variety. Oh, I'm just messing with you, Tony. <laughs> he, he knows I, I just mess with him. Right? He's a fan of the show. Call me. <laughs> uh, you think I've said too much. Okay, let's talk about Paddock. He's got another brother that came out of the woodwork. A guy named Bruce. He's got this Bruce Paddock guy, and he was arrested for, guess what? Child pornography on his computer. And he claims that his brother ran a child sex trafficking ring, and that's what I said last week. I was trying to steal my material. I think he's, he's a fan of the show, too. His brother ran a child sex trafficking ring that went all the way to the top. Yep. And he says before he mentions any names, he wants an immunity deal from Donald Trump. He wants Donald Trump's signature on a piece of paper saying you've got immunity before he starts spilling the beans and naming names. Maybe he hasn't been paying attention, but uh, somebody like that, that's that's uh, willing to name names and has information and it's credible, uh, they don't last very long. No, they don't. Seth Rich, for example, you know, he was giving out this information, Hillary Clinton's emails, etc., and to the WikiLeaks, and a lot of it had to do with this pedophile, pedogate thing, pizza gate, whatever you want to call it, and uh, they killed him. Hello. And they're trying to say there was a it was a suicide, yeah, yeah. It's a Seth Rich, yep, he was gonna give it all to WikiLeaks. I think he gave a lot of it to him, and then they then they killed him. Uh, this is Mars Theron. You're listening to American Freedom Radio, and my show is Conspiracy Company News. I will be back next week. Thank you for listening. <laughs>